Now, we are going to be going back to our TV audience in a little bit. They haven't had the pleasure of seeing this before. A lot of them haven't had. And so I'll be going over a little bit of information again. Some of you may have heard it, some not. Welcome back. Now, you're on safari, you're on a live safari, and you're on foot in the Kruger National Park, the last and one of the greatest wilderness areas left in the world. We're in the southern tip of Africa, in South Africa, and what you're having a look at is the caterpillar from a dice moth, arguably one of my favorite of the caterpillars out here. And you can see that very boldly colored body with those filaments that they're waving around on top, of, on, on top of its body. Now for many years, and I've been guiding here for the last 18 years, for many years it was very tough to understand exactly what those filaments were for. Mainly because there's not that much information on it. Until a friend of mine the other day studying wasps gave me the answer. Let's go back and I'll explain exactly what those filaments are for. Now some wasp species lay their eggs on caterpillars. The, caterp the, 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 the wasps larvae then hatch and feed on the living caterpillar, eventually pupating to come out as a wasp. And this little caterpillar has figured out that if it has these filaments on it, the wasps do not lay eggs on this particular caterpillar. And for the reason that, these filaments look exactly like the egg cases of that particular wasp species. Isn't that fantastic? So it's mimicking the egg cases of the wasp that preys on them, making the wasp believe that this caterpillar is already infected, or infested I should say, with, its, with another wasp's eggs, and so there won't be enough food for its babies and leaves this caterpillar alone. Isn't that amazing? The dice moth caterpillar. Now the moth itself is yellow with some dots on it. Not anywhere close to as beautiful as what its caterpillar is. Now what's quite evident there for you is the grasping claws on the front and the clasping pads on the back. Just have a look at that. Using those clasping or those grasping feet in the front to hold food close to its mouth. And we'll use the suction pad feet at the back to hold on. Let's see if it'll go into my finger, no? Amazing, eh? 